Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Tony's Tech Talk. Apologize for the uh, short delay there in getting started. Uh, we just had some logging in issues. So my name is Louise Faherty, and I'll be doing the Tech Talk today on behalf of Tony, who had to be, he was called away. And what we're going to look at today is the um, feature on Cantan MT called Cantan LQR and specifically setting up a project and the most, um, uh, the best way to do that. So making your own custom KPIs, choosing your reviewers carefully and choosing your data carefully. So first of all, before we start, I want to uh, address the question as to why we would bother doing an LQR. We've got automatic scores on the engines. They tell us uh, in great detail, segment by segment in your test data, what way the engine is performing and what the scores are like. So why can't we just rely on that? Well, I want to share with you a slide that uh, we recently used at a conference we ran in Dublin here called Canton Fest. Um, and I've stolen this from my colleague Dimitar, I hope he doesn't mind. Um, and basically it's, uh, it's evaluating quality between statistical machine translation, which is um, phrase-based machine translation, and uh, the rather more new technology called neural machine translation. And neural works slightly differently to statistical machine translation, so it often produces alternative translations. And if we look at these three examples here, um, we can see our source. So this is the gray here is your test data. And we'll just look at this middle one because it's slightly shorter. And also I don't speak German. <laughs> so your test data is in gray at the top. You can see our source here and the reference translation. So this has been taken from the data that was trained into the engine. You don't have to provide that separately. And it's basically going to what the automatic score will do will be comparing it with the translation that the machine uh, produces. So this uh, is part of the data that is trained into your engine, but it is set aside from the actual phrase table so that we can test with it. The engine produces a translation based on all the other data and we compare that with the reference translation. So that's what we're doing when we're testing automatically in the engine. And we can see here for our phrase-based statistical machine translation, uh, we're scoring quite well. We're seeing 72%. So this blue sentence has a 72% likeness, if you prefer, to the light gray sentence here. And we can see that, yes, it is very similar. The orange sentence is our neural machine translation. And as you can see, it's very different to the reference translation. It's scoring very low, 7%. But it is an absolutely reasonable and acceptable translation. It's really just that the engine has taken a slightly different route to providing this translation. It's chosen different words, but a disagree, not an agreement. We can say that they're equally good translations in English. And then, of course, we, it, the same below, although the, the score is even more striking in that the phrase based gets 100%, so it's, it's managed to create this sentence, to translate this sentence based on the data that it has that is exactly like the reference translation. However, for neural machine translation, which again is working slightly differently, it's giving us a score of zero, and we can see that this is an absolutely reasonable translation that any translator would just skip over and not have to do anything with. So I want to show you these examples to show you that while the automatic scores that we use in our engine uh, are the best, automatic, the best automatic method of scoring the engine, it doesn't give us the full picture. And it can be often very, very useful once we get our engines up to a decent uh, score. Usually we say for blue, we say an overall score for the engine of 60%. That running an LQR can give us some really interesting insights as to how that engine is operating and how we can make it better. So I'm just going to take us onto the platform here um, and take you through setting up a project on Canton LQR. Um, as with everything on Canton LQR, we've made it super user friendly or we've uh, made it as easy as we can, um, but also flexible. So we have a couple of really cool options that I hope uh, will be new to you and you can use them in your projects. So if I was setting up a project, I would go to my dashboard, which you can access everything in LQR on the left here. 
I go to my dashboard, I click New. I would give my engine some kind of meaningful name, so I would say client name, uh, content type, and um, the kind of test I want to run, perhaps what I want to analyze. Um, for this test, uh, we're going to look at quality evaluation, but we're also going to look at, let's say, well, we're going to use some help content. So we're going to look at usefulness. And I'm going to make my project unique with that. So we have our project type quality evaluation. I'm going to talk about the EBI testing after this as well. I hope I can squeeze everything in. Um, and a quality evaluation is designed slightly differently. So next we choose our source and language. So we've got English to Spanish. And we hit next. Again, a Cantonal LQR is quite cool in a way because it's always a sort of a project management tool for your LQR projects. So we can have a start date, end date, we can kick this off or we can set it up months in advance before our reviewers are ready and then when, when the project is due to start they'll get an email on the scheduled date. We can also put a cutoff point in our project and we say okay maybe not all the segments are reviewed but we're going to cut it off on this date and that's, that's the engine we're going to look at. So it's nice and flexible in that way. We hit create. So we have our project active here. Um, we're going to go to our KPIs. We have a couple of options for KPIs and the options are those that are compulsory. So the reviewer cannot move forward without filling out this KPI um, and those that are optional, which we'll see in the next screen. So I'm going to make this quite a straightforward project and I'm going to choose, well, I'm going to choose overall quality, but I also want to show you some of the other KPIs that you can choose. Adequacy and fluency uh, as a pair are often used. Um, we also have style, syntax, custom, which I will uh, cover shortly. We also have a few uh, industry standard sets, sets, such as the MQM, that's already in their setup. Um, we'll show you a little bit of how it works. And then we have some really nice uh, simplified versions of the MQM here, which look at accuracy, readability, terminology, and formatting. Um, I just want to talk about these different options a little bit, and I think it's it's certainly in the projects that we've worked on, it's really useful to think about what quality means to you before you start an LQR. So I think for most people, they'll be looking for the overall general idea of how well the translation is or how well it's put together. Um, but some people will be saying, we don't really care if it's fluent, we just want to make sure that it's accurate. So they're only going to really go for uh, ad adequacy or they might only go for some of these um, accuracy uh, KPIs here. So it's really important to think about what quality is. And for a lot of people, I think that um, this list of uh, KPIs, which is quite extensive, won't actually be enough. Um, there will be a specific test that they're looking for. Um, and I'm going to cover how you would work with that on Canton LQR with our custom KPIs. So my compulsory KPI is going to be overall quality. I'm going to also have some optional ones. So I'm going to choose, uh, I'm going to choose terminology and I'm going to choose readability. Um, so these are what I've defined as a really important uh, aspect for this client that who really needs an engine to solve these um, key issues. So I really want to test for those issues. I click next and I click add. Um, I'm just going to skip along and put in our test data, uh, which I have prepared earlier. So this is actually uh, data I've just taken from the help page of Wikipedia and translated it with one of our neural engines. So bear with me when I just copy and paste it in. And just to show you, this is as easy as it needs to be. You don't need to upload an XML or anything like that. You can just simply copy and paste um, your segments that you want to test with. And obviously, give a bit of thought to the segments as well because there's no point in testing for something that doesn't actually come up in your segments. 
So we've got our target. And then we can review the length, the number of words, and crucially the number of lines. So we want to make sure that it's aligned, that there's 15 lines in each. And we click Add. Uh, just a note, a warning here, once you go past this point, you can't actually change your test data for this project. But as you can see, it's really easy and quick to set up projects. So if you make a mistake, making a new project isn't that difficult. So we have some test data and we have some KPIs. Um, if I go back to my projects page now, I can actually view this project from the perspective of a reviewer. So I'm going to go back to the projects dashboard, select my project that I'm working on here, and use this little eye uh, to preview the project as a reviewer would find it. So this is a nice little tool because it gives you a sense of what the project is going to I guess, how it's going to flow for a reviewer. The user experience for a reviewer is so important because uh, we want to make sure there's no reviewer fatigue. We want to give them the full uh, context here. So you see we've got our, um, once this is a live project, you'll have the previous and the subsequent segments uh, for, both source and, for both source and target, which gives them some nice context. And um, another really cool tool is that this page is actually, uh, keyboard operated so we don't need to use the mouse we can use the mouse if we want but I can just go and change this gender of this article and I can maybe change the verb oops me I knew that would happen <laughs> so uh, I can change this verb by going back to the start of the sentence and I can say I want to make that to C um, use the tab to tab through. I don't need to leave a comment if I don't want to. Um, my compulsory KPI here is overall quality. So I'm going to choose a four for that, uh, for overall quality. And then my optional KPIs here, I can say, it's an awkward way to say this, or I can choose a terminology, or I can not choose any of that as well. And then I just click next. So that gives us an idea of what the reviewer will go through and how easy it is if you're setting up a project that has you know, 40 different KPIs in it, the reviewer is going to get tired and they're probably not going to like the translations very much when they get tired. So it's nice to kind of get a, get a bird's eye view on what they're going to go through. Okay, so just to click back really quickly. Um, so we have our project here, we have our KPIs added, um, and we have our test data. Um, to add the reviewers is super, super simple. You go to the reviewers tab here, click add, and I'm going to add my LQR reviewer I set up. Next, and I can add as many reviewers as I like here as well. I can add my, my own email address, etc. etc. Um, and then when I click add, that reviewer will get an email alert to say you've got a project on Canton LQR, start reviewing whenever you're ready. So I'll just switch over to the reviewer view. So we can see here, if we just refresh the page, that our, this is the reviewer that I've just added to that project. Here we have the project here. Um, the reviewer's process then is to accept the project if they want to work on it, uh, or they can I also, if they're working on a project, they can see their project summary in real time, which is really nice. Um, and yeah, so if, let's just see what that looks like. We'll accept the project, get started working by clicking this little pencil, and you can see that the segment is presented as we saw before, um, but it's it randomly selected, so the reviewer could get a segment from anywhere in the project. Uh, again, I can make some changes here, I can change my overall quality, I can blah, 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 and then I can hit next. So super, super fast, we want to make it as easy as possible for the reviewer and as clear as possible while make it a, making it a fair test. So that's what the reviewer sees when they're working on a Canton LQR. I want to go back to our a project manager dashboard. So this is me logged in as project manager who's setting up projects. And I want to show you uh, just one aspect of our KPIs, which is really interesting. So you saw earlier, I was adding KPIs to this project. 
Now I can go back uh, to the list of KPIs and I can review it um, if I'm just setting up the project and I want to see what is available. So you can see here you have the name of the KPI, a short description of what it's looking at, um, and then the different, the type of uh, test that it's, it's doing and also the different uh, categories. So because I'm doing help content, I want to test that particular content for a particular value which I've identified is really important. So I want to create a custom KPI. And to do that, I just hit the create button. Um, I give my KPI a name. So I want to see whether the help content is useful or not. I want to ask the reviewer, does this answer your question? So you can see I've already tried to put this one in, we'll just make that unusual. Um, then I have an option to check what kind of test it's going to be. So you can have a text area if you want to leave a particular type of comment, um, a review let's say. You can have stars if it's one star to five stars depending on what quality it is. But really this is a yes or no question. So I'm going to choose the radio buttons for that. I hit next. Uh, my, my options are yes or no. Okay. And then I can leave a short description. I can say something like, uh, is the user given enough, is the help offered adequate? Uh, and then also I can choose what is presented to the reviewer as a default value. So a reviewer may be breezing through it really quickly. They may not want, they may not be interested in changing this value. So you want, you don't want to skew their results basically by um, choosing a default value that will lead it in a certain way. But if it's a, a, a compulsory KPI, they obviously have to leave some kind of value. So you can choose a default. I'm going to default to no, uh, just so that the reviewer really has to think, does this actually answer the question or not? Uh, and hit create. So I'm just going to super, super quickly add uh, a new project to test this. Quality evaluation, I'm going to make it English, change Spanish again. And that's fine. So this is my new test project on here. So if I go back up to the KPIs tab, I can add my new KPI. Okay. I can add some optional KPIs. Let's throw in I like to see um, fluency just to show. And then I'll just throw in the test data and then you can see how it would look uh, for a reviewer. And of course, it's really to show you that you don't just have to rely on the KPIs that are there, although they're very extensive and they have a lot of really useful things there. Um, but you can make this test as specific as you want it to be to the content that you want to translate with this engine. And with uh, machine translation being specific, being in domain, is really, really useful. Yep, that's mine. So I'll go back here. And I can preview the project again, if you see down here with this little eye, just make that center. Oops, that is the wrong one. Maybe there's a bit of lag with the computer being using GoToMeeting. So here we have the, the uh, same screen as we've seen again. We can change the translation here to give us a review. We can leave a comment and we've got our custom KPI. Does this answer the question? No or yes. So I hope that answers some questions for uh, Canton LQR. Um, I'm just looking through my list. I think I breezed through an awful lot of stuff, um, but a, it's just to show you the, the full power of Canton LQR and really you can make it as customized as you like for your project or you can follow uh, the projects that are, that are already there as an example. 
And if you have any questions, feel free to get in contact with uh, professional services at cantonnt.com. And thank you very much for attending.